Uh, me and my oldest son, uh, Benjamin, uh, we're on uh, almost the very top of Sassafras Mountain in South Carolina. Up to the very top, it's 53, it's 3,553 feet uh, elevation, about half as high as Mount Mitchell, to put that in perspective for you. <clears throat> but it is the highest peak in, in South Carolina. This cold is a whiz up here today. And up on the very top, the wind's blowing across up there. It just freeze the life out of you. I appreciate you joining in. And, uh, and I hope these uh, videos are a help to you in your life, in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know some of you can't get out and go places like this. And, and I'm fastly getting to where I understand that. But we appreciate you. And we'd love to pray for you. So let me know if you have a prayer request. I'll do my best to pray for you. Well, we're picking up in our study of the book of Revelation today, and this is a quite a book to study. Uh, there's a lot here, but it, but it's uh, it's very very to the point. Now we're talking about the letters that the Lord gave to the seven churches of Asia Minor in this study, and we'll we're into uh, the fourth church, the message to Thyatira. Now this church. Uh, and history covers the period, say, from 500 to 1500 A.D. Now, naturally, this church didn't last that long, but the things in it are very symbolic of that church age period. Now, this church actually existed. It was a real church, and this is a real letter written to that real church. And the things that are written here to that church are true and very much specific to that church. And so not only does it contain the message for the church that was in Thyatira at their day, but also uh, is symbolic of the church age which was yet to come and years ahead of them. Let's look at this church now. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who have his eyes like, like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Again, we find more descriptions of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning of each of these church letters, we find descriptions of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you put them all together, uh, it's an awesome picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, when you look at these together, these descriptions, uh, it is amazing. Back in uh, verse number 12, he said, These things saith he which had the sharp sword with two edges. Uh, back in uh, uh, verse number 8, he said, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Uh, back in uh, verse 1, These things saith he which holdeth his seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And so right here we read he has eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. Now this is awesome right here. I guarantee you we'll fall at his feet one day and uh, when we see him and we'll, we'll be totally in awe at the presence of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It'll be beyond what we can describe. I've never seen anybody like this and you haven't either. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> to see a, a real person, a real being with eyes likened to a flame of fire and feet like they're made of fine brass. That is amazing, isn't it? Uh, when he comes back, it's not going to be the meek and lowly Jesus who rode a donkey into Jerusalem. He'll be coming back, taking vengeance on them that know him not in flame and fire. He'll be coming back in clouds and great glory. He'll be coming back, and the Bible says, a sharp sword shall proceed out of his mouth and shall slay all the armies that are gathered together against him in the valley of Megiddo. Well, right here. Now, he goes on to address <clears throat> the church in Thyatira. He said, I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Well, uh, evidently this church in Thyatira was a busy church who worked, worked to spread the gospel. They must have worked as well uh, in other things like in charity, service, and faith, patience. Uh, he's got some good things to say about the church in Thyatira. Uh, and, uh, and this is good things to be said about a church. And I appreciate a church that works to get the gospel out. And I do. I really do appreciate that about a church that works to get the gospel out. And I appreciate a church that works uh, uh, in charity, works of love and kindness to the fellow man. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, members of that church. I appreciate churches who do things to help their members. I appreciate appreciate a church that reaches out in the community and does things to help the people of the community. Uh, I appreciate uh, that. 
and then their service, which is as well included in that, and their faith. I mean, you have to do that by faith. Uh, you don't do that looking at the pocketbook. You don't do that looking at the dollar. And then he says, and thy patience. <clears throat> and of course, patience to do continually to do those kind of things. Now, that is some good uh, things that are said to the church in Thyatira. And then he says, and the last to be more than the first. Uh, so he goes on here, the works, again, are mentioned, and he says that is a good thing and more than what was first mentioned about you. Well, uh, those are, it's good. And, and you could, uh, it would be good if we could say that about every church that we know of. But now in verse 20, he says, notwithstanding, he says, I have a few things against thee. Now notice right here what he's going to say he has against thee. And uh, this here takes us back into the scriptures a ways, but he brings it up to date, even the New Testament church age. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to, and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Well, uh, <clears throat> now that woman Jezebel, now obviously that woman Jezebel was not alive in A.D. 96. But that woman Jezebel, that's a reference to the Old Testament uh, back in the days of Jehe Ahab and Jezebel uh, in the book of Kings is where we find back in the time of Elijah the prophet. So hundreds of years before is where this name comes from. But um, the deed that she did back in those days were the same deeds uh, that, uh, that this uh, woman right here perhaps uh, practiced the same thing. And maybe there was a woman by that very name uh, which came about doing the same thing that Jezebel of old did. I don't know for sure about that, but I know that the same things that Jezebel of old did were done in the church of Thyatira in the New Testament dispensation. And called herself a prophetess, which meant she really wasn't, but called herself one. <clears throat> and then what, what did she do? To teach and to seduce my servants. In other words, she led them astray by, by her false teaching. But she led them astray to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Well, what about that? That's a terrible thing to do, to teach God's people to commit fornication. But I want you to know what? We see that in the church today. <clears throat> Not only are some of these people teaching them to do that by their example, uh, they're smiling about it and going along with it. And <clears throat> thus they are teaching to do that in our day. And then she also taught them to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, Paul wrote quite a bit about things, about meat, whether you could eat it or whether you didn't, whether you couldn't eat it, and that which was sacrificed to idols. And, uh, and so uh, Paul gives you the, the straight of that. But right here is spoken against off because these people knew that that meat was definitely sacrificed to an idol and they still ate it. Well, Paul said, ask no questions for conscience sake. And so I think that's the key to it. But these people right here in Thyatira, they did it knowingly. With their eyes wide open, they did this. Well, it was a terrible thing. Look, look in verse 21. It's, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now, if you'll turn back into the book of Kings and read about Jezebel, you'll find that the Lord gave her about another 20 years to repent. And so he says right here very plainly, so I gave her space to repent, but she repented not. And she didn't. <clears throat> you can turn back and read that. She never repented of anything, fled into the city of Jezreel, and uh, was trampled under the horse uh, shoes of uh, Jehu and the rest of the men of war with him. Uh, they, they killed her inside and threw her head out and threw everything out, and then the dogs ate her up. That was the way that she, she finished off. Well, in verse 22, goes on to say, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, into great tribulation, except they repent of her deeds. Well, the Lord is telling right here the end of what's going to happen to Jezebel uh, of the present day, and the Jezebel, the Thyatira church age, and uh, all who commit fornication with her into great tribulation. And I think that the... Uh, 
And the word adultery and fornication are to be taken literally in this chapter. And I could see where it could be spiritualized uh, to refer to those who commit spiritual adultery against the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and worship others. I could see that. But we'll leave it right where it's at for right now. And then he goes on with this judgment about her in verse 23. And I will kill her children with death. And, I, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Well, he says, I'm also going to kill her children that have committed this and done this thing. Now, just to be realistic in our day and time, fornication and adultery is rampant throughout America, and you know it is. Uh, it's touched probably <coughs> most every home that I know anything about. Somebody somewhere in that home has been... Uh, touched and hurt by fornication and adultery and sometimes both. Uh, so many churches in our days have pastors who have gotten involved in the thing and have had to resign and go away. Uh, there have been deacons to get involved in that, Sunday school teachers, and all kinds of Christians in our day. And I'm told that by the number of Christians doing this, is almost as big as the world is doing. And that is a shame of our day that they would do such things. Well, there's a warning given to Jezebel and to her children right here. And the church of today and all who read this today would do well to take heed uh, to this scripture right here. And I guarantee you those in Thyatira met the judgment of the Lord. Now, as we shall read on uh, right here, uh, we're going to find that uh, he says, The churches shall know that I am he that searcheth the reins. Now, that means the intent. Uh, when you think of reins, that's thinking about uh, that which you would guide a horse or a mule with. Uh, you'd put reins on him to guide him. Uh, he searcheth the reins, the guidance of the mind and the hearts. Uh, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. You don't have to worry about that being so. The Lord searches and knows why we're doing what we're doing. And he also uh, searches our heart to know the depth of our motive. Uh, so don't worry about uh, keeping track of uh, your rewards. The Lord's doing that. And he'll judge rightly and he'll give right rewards to the right one when the day comes. You don't have to worry about that. And so in verse 24, But unto you I say unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, that is the doctrine of Jezebel, uh, and which have not known the depths of Satan, that is the fornication, the false worship, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. What about that? The Lord's laying not upon those who live for him any other burden. And those today who live for him, he's not out to put more on you than you can bear. And upon the church in Thyatira, he laid no more on them people than was necessary. But he did say, he said, I will judge and I will deal with this. And he said, I will kill her children. But uh, the children of those who live for the Lord will not be called up in that kind of a judgment. Look in verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. And, uh, and hopefully they did. Uh, obviously they didn't do it for too long. The church is no longer there. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now here is a great promise to those who are faithful unto the Lord Jesus Christ. A great promise in verse 26. He that overcometh. There are all kinds of things that would turn us aside, just like Jezebel's teaching in the church of Thyatira. And there are things today that would turn us aside too. But here is a promise to the church of Thyatira, and also you can claim that as well if you know the Lord today. Uh, if you be faithful unto the end, <clears throat> I will give power over the nations. Now, I'm not sure all that that means, but it's tied in with verse 27 when it talks about the Lord, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. And so I think that's referring to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ when he reigns with a rod of iron, that we who have been faithful shall have power over the nations when he comes. Verse 28, he says, And I will give him the morning star, and that is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ, shining his brightness. Verse 29, He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Well, my friends, there's a lot said right here in this <clears throat> letter to Thyatira. And we could study this and talk about this church and for a long, long time. But remember this, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you're going to have to face God one day. And if you don't know him, 
uh, you'll be eternally too late and you'll never have another chance. Right now, while you're alive, while you breathe, and while you have your mind, repent and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior and to save you for Jesus' sake. And you'll find he'll do that very thing and he'll make a wonderful new creature of you in Christ Jesus the Lord.